The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of Around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminators on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on Oriented Television. Um, a lot to look at this week. We had a lot of basketball to look at, obviously. Of course, the week that was. Um, I mean, like, really interesting um, storylines. Um, but we got some big-time stories here out of the, um, in football. I mean, we finally got a new coach in place over at Royal Oak. Um, the administration decided to go with um, Colin Campbell um, to take over the program there. Um, you know, I, I wrote a column on it, um, and um, I was going to, talk about my thoughts today on the pod here about the, um, the hire there. Um, and, um, I think there's some good and I think there's some bad, um, when you talk about that hire. Um, so when you really look at, um, and then we also got some girls basketball stuff to talk about, obviously the, um, the big stories, of course, um, you know, West Bloomfield right now on a roll, Lake Orion's been playing some good basketball. Um, of course, North Farmington's game with Ox. We're going to recap that one, um, behind in, for North Farmington, is it a good idea for them to make the move up to the Redneck season? So we'll see if that if that goes. And also um, in the blue, also on um, Bloomfield Hills, um, they will be finally being test get tested um, after having to cancel their game with them. Summit Academy, they do have an opponent um, in Stony Creek. We're going to preview that one as well um, before they head into Tuesday's games. Um, let's go to our big story. Obviously, we talked about this is the... Um, Royal Oak new foot at Royal Oak. Obviously, they have the new football coach and um Colin Campbell taking over. Um, Campbell, of course, was the interim coach last year, taking over for Coach Justin Truitt. Um, of course, Truitt was placed on administrative leave back in October um, after an inappropriate comment um, that forced him out. And then um Colin Campbell is the interim coach. Um, he was the JV coach at Royal Oak. He's a um, staff member in the building, um, but his stats were. 0 and 3, um, and they were outscored 229 to nothing. Um, so when you really look at hires like this, when you go from the interim coach to taking away the um interim tag to being named the head coach, um, what helps here is Campbell's familiar with the with the players. He's familiar with the people in the building. Um, the kids love him, and I watched the halftime. Um, I watched a halftime of the Berkeley Royal Oak game when they introduced him as the new head coach. Um, I was really, really intrigued, um, you know, how popular he was. Really intrigued. Um, you know, and that's all fine. I mean, like, but you're in a res- results-producing league. You have to produce results, and Royal Oak football has not been able to produce results. And when you clearly look at what I'm trying to say to you is – you look at the records. I mean, Royal Oak, you know, let's not, this is a team that's finished one and eight last year. I mean, they were just, they were not very good last year. Bottom line was, you know, they, I mean, they, I mean, they were just absolutely shredded, you know, in a couple games. I mean, they were blown out in several of them. I mean, and then when Campbell took over, you know, this team was in complete disarray. I mean, they were outscored in his three games coaching there. By a score of 229 to nothing. And you're taking over a program that is 34 and 107 since 2006. So when you really look at this and look at the hire and look at the stats and look at Campbell's last three games as coach, you're going to say to yourself, this is not a good hire. Um, but. They went with Campbell, and, you know, the kids like him, and that's fine. But the stats and the numbers prove otherwise. Um, Now, Royal Oak does have to replace a lot of talent. Obviously, you're going to have to have a new quarterback. Um, Your running game, obviously, you lose Makai Jenkins. It's a big loss there. You lose some members of your offensive line. Obviously, Ellie Finch is going to be a big loss for them there. Um, But there are still some playmakers that Royal Oak has. I mean, obviously... When you look at the Ravens, one thing you have to look at um, 
you know, they do got some key players. Their linebackers are back, led by Michael Herman, um, Steve Johnson, and Elijah Lyons. Um, they got Sam Klonke and Aiden Tesh up front. Um, Nathan Benton probably can be the running back, and Oren Lowers at wide receiver. Um, but when you look at Royal Oak, obviously their JV team last year was solid. Um, and you really look at, you know, they're hoping, of course, that JV success can translate into the varsity. Now, when you really look at it, <laughs> when you go from JV to varsity, sometimes the transition doesn't always work out. And I think here in this case here, obviously with Campbell coaching, um, he does bring some sort of stability to them. The, as I mentioned earlier, of course, you know, you're really not changing the program. Um aspect of it but let's not forget this is the Royal Oaks third coach in two years I mean like um so so there's really gonna be so I'm a little worried about the you know the um the juniors and the especially the seniors this year because considering that they've been going through a lot with the transition changes the coaching changes and also those who were up on varsity last year um kind of worried about that transition period there for them I mean like now I know the transition will probably help out during the summer, obviously. But it's still, you're going to have to have it during the season. And when you look at Royal Oak as a program, um, stats don't lie. I mean, you know, stats truly, it, it, they just don't lie. I mean, you know, you've won 34 games since 2006. That's that's not good. Um, you know, 34 and 107 since, and that's not good either. Um, so when you look at, this program, you know, this program last year was in complete disarray. I mean, it really was. Um, you know, going through, of course, they had the positives with, um, you know, the positive moments with Ellie Finch, obviously, and then you had what happened to um, to Dustin Truett, um, you know, with the um, inappropriate comments um, that cost him his job. Um, coaching football, I mean, like, so when you really look at, this hire, people are going to say, of course, you know, and I read the, and I watched the interview and I watched the, um, halftime, halftime, um, of announcing Campbell as the coach. And, you know, I'm going like, okay, you know what I mean? If they like him, fine. I mean, like, you know, but what's he going to bring? What's he going to bring? Is he going to bring, of course, you got to be coached. You got to have, you got to have accountability and you're in a produce results league. I mean, it's, it's clear to me that, you know, this hire, you know, it, it, it does make some sense, but, but you got to produce results. And you look at, and you look at the numbers, Royal Oak really has not, um, produced results. I mean, like they, I mean, you look at last year, of course, they had some really tough losses. I mean, like, you know, and then you look at the division, obviously you didn't fare well against the division. Your only win last year was against Pontiac and, the, and everybody else you lost to. I mean, like, so, and, and you look at what going ahead for Campbell, obviously, I don't really see any changes, you know, when you look at Royal Oak um, under Campbell. And I think that's, you know, it's going to be a very tough sell. Um, it's um, it's kind of hard for me to buy into Royal Oak football right now, considering where they're at right now. I mean, it really is. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that, they have not fared well, not in the division and not in the non-league. I mean, I mean, and then with Campbell's hire, obviously, you know, when you look at the three games he coached interim wise, I mean, does that, I mean, you've gotten out, they've gotten out scored 229 to nothing, um, 0-3. Um, you really gotta, you really have to say, say, okay, you know what I mean? Like, so for them to move, remove the interim tag off him, I mean, like, um, you know, I think, you know, it'll be very interesting considering this will be his his team. You know what I mean? So considering, obviously, when you look at interim coaches um, getting the interim tag taken off, um, clearly to me, how I look at it here, I mean, like, you know, the numbers, the numbers say this is not a good hire, but it looks like from an administration standpoint, it looks like this is a good hire. But the numbers have to prove itself, you know, and, Campbell has to prove himself that is he a varsity coach? You know, that's the, that's the challenge for Campbell is can he prove to the doubters that, you know, 
that this is a different Royal Oak team and that that his vision, how can his vision, you know, bring Royal Oak, you know, back, you know, bring him back to maybe postseason, Dom, back to postseason. I mean, maybe get them competitive, especially when you look at the last few years in the gold slash blue. They have not been very good. Um, so when you really look at, you know, Campbell's got a lot to prove. I mean, he's got a lot to prove, not only to himself, but his school, the community, but also in the media as well, and say, okay, can Royal Oak be able to compete at a high level, considering that where you've been, they, this team has not been at a, you know, they have not been very, very good. And that has been clear to date. And you look at Royal Oak, um, you know, you look at, of course, the division they're in with the gold this year. Um, you got Avondale in there. I think Avondale's better than they were last year. Um, I think that, um, I think Pontiac, you know, Pontiac, yes, they've been through some really, really dark times. Um, and, you know, they're looking for a new coach as well. I mean, like, so that's something to really look at. But, you know, I thought Ken Wade made some strides over there at Pontiac. Um, but um, he's no longer there. So now they're going to be going through a transition period there. Um, and then, of course, there's your arch rivals. You got Ferndale, of course, who just won the division last year. Um, and They do lose a lot of talent, but... You know, Coach Eric Royal, he does find ways to get some play to get playmakers, whether it's Ferndale or at Ferndale U. Remember, that's his co-op team over there. Um, but the main team that I think that Ferndale at um, Royal Oak needs to beat and they have to um produce against is their arch rivals from from the west side of Woodward, and that's Berkeley. I mean, you really look at what happened in that game last year. Berkeley was not a good football team. They were not. I mean, they had some inner turmoils themselves, but they just beat Royal. They shut Royal Oak out. They beat them. I mean, there's a reason why the battle of Woodward that um the slab the, the slab is right now at Catalpa and not at Lexington. There is a difference there. And I think the reason why I say this is because, you know, you look at what Berkeley's done under Coach Sean Shields is that they've been stable. They built a program. Now, last year was a down year for them. I expect them to be better this year. But, you know, but they still own Royal Oak. They still own him. That's really where, you know, you got to change things if you're Campbell. Is you got you to gotta flip that rivalry. Because right now, that rivalry right now is colored in maroon and dark blue. Not in not in black and blue. I mean, there's some challenges that I see for Royal Oak. There, there is some challenges here. I mean, can Campbell prove to me that he can get Royal Oak in a different direction? Because all I've heard about is S O R. If you know what that means, it's the same old Ravens where they've struggled in games. There were games that were favored. They end up losing those games. Some games that, you know, that they were, you know, and then there were some games that were blown out. Can Campbell change that? That is the big question I have with Royal Oak is can he change the culture there? Because Coach, because when Dustin Truett took the job, he had a really hard time changing the culture there. And, you know, I'm curious to see how Campbell does with this. Because you look at the situation they're in, the stats don't lie. You know, is it a, I mean, you got great kids there at Royal. You got great kids there. But stats don't lie. History doesn't lie. You want to change history, you got to start winning games. And Royal Oak, when I look at them, they got some talent there. I mean, there's some players there. But last year, I kind of felt like, you know, and I'm being honest with you, you kind of wasted some proven talent. You wasted Hudson Seidel. You wasted Mac Makai Jenkins, is now at Central Michigan. And you, and you wasted Ellie Finch. I mean... That's how I'm viewing it. And 
and the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. When you look at stats, when you look at, of course, changing the culture, changing accountability, I mean, like, you know, and when I look at this higher and I say, okay, can Campbell do that? Can he do that? That's the challenge I have for him is can he prove to me that this team is not the same old Ravens? Can he do that? Because when you look at the division they're in, you look at Avondale, you look at, you obviously look at Berkeley, you got Fer, you got Ferndale there, and then you got Pontiac. I mean, you can win some games in there. And then you still have rivalries with Troy and Troy Athens, both those teams. I mean, Troy Athens, they had a, they had a decent year last, last this year. They had a decent year last year. And Troy was a playoff team a year ago. Um, now when you look at Troy, I mean, like, I think with them, they did lose, they do lose a lot of talent though. They do lose a lot of talent. I think Troy Athens, I expect them to be better coming up. I expect them to be better. So for Campbell, this is my challenge to him is you got to change the call through there. You got to basically turn, you got to turn around a product that has really been struggling in the doldrums the last few years, you got to make me believe that you can change 34 and 107. You can't, you got to, you got to believe, believe, make me believe that. Can, are you the guy that can change this program and turn it around? That's the challenge I have. I know he says they're going to try, but you know, when you look at Star Wars in the series, you know, you look at Yoda, what he always says, there always, there is no why, there is no try, there is do. Um, so when you really look at Royal, you know, the schedule, obviously the schedule hasn't been fully out yet for them. Um, I mean, like they got, I mean, like we mentioned the league schedule. Um, I will have more information when the league schedule comes. Um, but my thoughts on the Campbell hire, um, you know, for uh, the administration likes him, you know, that's fine. He's a very, he's very popular within the student body. That's fine. Um, but he's got to produce results. He's got to be the one that produces these results for Royal Oak. I mean, like, sometimes, you know, I mean, people say, well, it's not about wins and losses. Yeah, it is. It clearly is. Because, you know, when you look at Royal Oak football, obviously, you know, you have to be, you have to produce results. I mean, like, you got to. I mean, like, you know, for so long, this program has really suffered and struggled. I mean, like, they they want a winning program there. They want a winning culture there. You know, for Campbell, can, is he the guy that can do it? That's the question I have coming in with for this team. If, they, if he can do this in his first year, maybe win at least five or six games, you know, I think that I think that's turning the corner. But if he wins at least one or two, you know, then then there's there's gonna be this the SOR thing with Royal Oak. Because you expect with Campbell, I know that you're gonna say, okay, there's a complete transition period. That does have to happen, yes. But this team's been in transition since Coach Ray McMahon left. I mean, and it and it truly didn't work out last year. So if you're so if you're Campbell, this is your chance, your opportunity to say, okay, I'm going to put my stamp on this team. I'm going to put my stamp on the season, and I want to make some noise in this division. That's what I need to see from Campbell this year, is can he be the guy that can turn this program around? Because there's been a lot of coaches there you know, that this is their third coach in two years. And you look at, of course, you know, they're going through a transition period. But this team's got to win games. They don't need to win in the future. They need to win now. That's how it is with Royal Oak. You need to win now. You need to beat Berkeley. You need to beat Ferndale. That's the, that's the three games that you have to win on your schedule. 
You can have the talent to turn things around. Yes, you got to replace your quarterback. You got to replace a couple of key players offensively on both sides of the ball. You got yes, program strength is a problem. I mean, like we get it, but if you're Coach Campbell, you could, you got to win now. That's truly what it is. Bottom line, end of discussion. Okay, now let's go from football. Let's go to boys basketball. I mean, like obviously, when you look at boys basketball, um, the big story, of course. Obviously, you look at the league play is underway for the white. The league play has been underway for the gold. Um, league play, of course, been well underway for the red and the blue. Um, my take on each division, um, I'm going to go with the white first. I mean, white just started league play this week. Um, Bloompia Hill is, of course, surviving against Lake Orion by one, um, 56-55. Um, and then you look at um, West Bloomfield surviving Groves, 56-49. Um, and then Troy, of course, had no issue with Farmington in that one. Um, what I've learned about this division, it's pretty simple. Um, I think when you look at the white and you clearly look at Troy, you look at Bloomfield Hills, um, Bloomfield Hills is a much different team without no advantage. I mean, that's a clear, clear cut example. Yes, he did get hurt in that game against Lake Orion, but he did come back and play. Um, when I look at Troy, um, Bryce Parker, I think he's going to be a key player for them going forward. Obviously, he got the starting six, obviously. Um, and then you look at, of course, um, you look at West Bloomfield coming off a emotional tough loss to Harper Woods um, where they just, where I heard a lot of things, you know, they got ripped off. Um, I haven't looked at the film yet of that game. Um, but it looked like, you know, it looked like they did get ripped off in that game. But they bounced back, um, knocked off a very good Groves team. Um, and then you look at, um, and then, of course, you have Lake Orion and you have Far Groves and Farmington. Um, when I look at, when I look at this division, yeah, Troy and Bloomby Hills really do stand out. Um, but, you know, Troy really, you can't really, I mean, yeah, they've been tested. But, you know, when they beat Farmington, Farmington, they're a young team. I mean, they're a young team. They got a very good freshman. Um, I mean, they're, I mean, like, you know, so when I look at Farmington, I think they're going to be fine. Um, on the flip side, I got Groves, of course. Um, Groves coming off that tough loss. I mean, I think Groves will be fine as well. Uh, I think Groves will be fine. I think Lake Orion will be fine. Um, Farmington, I got some concerns. Um, on Groves' case, obviously, Josh Simpson, Josh Gibson, um, I mean, they had a big game from, um, they had a, they had a big game against Adams. Of course, they had that tough loss to them the other night. Um, but I think coach Mark West's team has done a really nice job. I mean, they got some really good players there on that team. There's some players I really liked on that team. Um, Lake Orion, you know, when you look at the dragons, you know, miss layups and, um, miss free throws that doing them in that game against Bloomfield Hills. Um, but I think they're going to be fine. I mean, DJ Morrow had a really nice game for them. Um, Blake Liddell has been kind of been on and off a little bit, which is a, which has been very unusual. Nate Havrilla has been playing good for them. Um, but they got to get more from Kawhi Fly and Kevin Tobe. If they can get more from them, I think they're going to be just fine. Um, defensively, I thought this team looked solid defensively. Um, I mean, like, for Coach Jose Andrade, I mean, like, it's clear to me, you know what I mean, when you look at this team, they're going to be fine. If they can clean up the fundamental stuff, the mental mistakes, you know, we're, they're going to be in the conversation. Um, So I think Lake Orion's fine. I really do. Um, I think Groves is also fine. They play each other on Thursday night. That'll be really interesting. Um, Lake Orion, they got a, a very tough non-conference game. Warren D. LaSalle coming up. Um... So I'll be very curious to see what happens there with those two teams. I mean, Troy, obviously, we know that they're, they've are they been playing some good basketball. Bloomfield Hills kind of been a little spotty a little bit. Um, but we'll see with them. I mean, they, I mean, Bloomfield Hills and Troy, they play on Thursday night. That's going to be really interesting to see what happens there in that game. Um, and then Farmington, obviously, they're a young team. Obviously, they're playing better, obviously. Um, but when I look at them... I mean, like, there's there's still some question marks. I mean, they still got to play North Farmington. That's going to be a very difficult match for them. Um, 
and then they play West Bloomfield, and West Bloomfield's been a team that, you know, has had their moments. I mean, they've had moments of greatness. They've had moments of good. They've had some moments of bad as well. So, so, but I like what Coach Edward Jordan's doing there over there. Um, like I said, the white, there's a lot of parity in this division. There's a lot of balance in this division, and I think they're going to be just fine right now. So when you look at the white right now, obviously, I think the white right now, with the way that it is right now, I think everybody's going to be fine. Um, let's go from the white to the red. Um, when you look at the red, um, you know, North Farmington's been rolling. Um, Ferndale had a really tough loss the, the other night against them, you know, up, up in Ohio. I mean, to Bucktail. I mean, they lost that one, um, 77 to 66. Um, you know, obviously for me, I think the schedule is starting to take its toll on Coach Juan Rickman, even though he will deny it. I just think that, um, I just think, you know, I, I think, this playing a tough schedule is gonna is really getting taking its toll on them. I mean, yes, I know that they want to get to Breslin, obviously, but you know, but there comes a time where you just gotta lighten up the schedule, man. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it with them. Um Oak Park coming off that tough loss to North Farmington. Um the sophomores really did struggle in that game against them. Um and then um and then you have um, Clarkson, of course, has been, you know, they had that terrible loss to Ferndale, but had to survive Rochester. Um, and, and what doomed them, what doomed Clarkson that first quarter of that Ferndale game was the first quarter of that game. I mean, that, so that's what doomed them in that game. I mean, really did. Um, and then there was Adams. I mean, Adams coming off a nice win against Groves. Um, I like where, I like William G. I like Peter, Peter Caracas a lot. They're junior guards. Um, they can both shoot lights out from three. They're really good basketball players. I really, I really like what Coach Jared Thomas has done with that program. Um, ever since taking over that program, he has built three programs. He has, he has built the sub varsity programs. I mean, like he has built a well-oiled machine over there at Rochester Adams. Uh, and that's even mentioned Brady Prescorn. I mean, like, so when you really look at Adams, I mean, like, um, Drew Bessmer, I think the big guy there, he's been having a nice start for them. Um, I, I, Adams, there's a lot of, lot to like with them. A lot to like with Rochester Adams. I mean, like, you know, I, I, I think right now, if I had to pick the three, the best team in the city of Rochester right now, it would be Rochester Adams, clearly. I mean, because of what they got back, um, the proven players, their juniors have really improved. I mean, there's a lot to like with Adams, really is. Um, let's go now to the blue division. Um, when you look at the blue, um, it is clear to me that Berkeley is the best team in this division. I mean, you look at the play they did against Royal Oak. Um, Tamir Rukovic has really played well for them. I mean, he made some timely baskets against Royal Oak. Jacob Sharif had a really nice game against Royal Oak as well. Um, went into a hostile environment there. I mean, like you know how tense the Berkeley Royal Oak game can get. It can get real tense. I mean, like, I was a little surprised, though, with the student sections. I mean, like, Royal Oak, you know, you know where they always put Royal Oak at. I mean, like, but the Berkeley section, they moved them up top. And to me, that's a little surprising. And the reason why I say this is because you look at, obviously, these games, it, these gyms. Obviously, you got Utica's gym um, in Macomb County where, you know, they put the students right, 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 on the um, opposite side of the visitor's bench, and they got to deal with them in the second half. Um, Royal Oak, obviously, you know, they have their home, um, they have the home side, home team going that way and going their side in the second half. Um, but just kind of really in that game, when you really look at that game and the emotion, you know, that, that game takes, and you look. You look at rivalries around the around the entire league. Obviously, you got Lake Orion, Oxford. You got Berkeley, Royal Oak, um, Adams, Rochester, Adams, Stony Creek, Rochester, Stony Creek. But Berkeley and um, but Berkeley and um, Royal Oak is a really interesting rivalry. I mean, like you know, separated by Woodward. Um, I just think in that game. You know, I know that after the game, um, a couple of the Bears players stomped on the Raven Bird. Um, you know, I just imagine, you know, they still got to play again over at Catalpa. So 
that'll be really interesting when those two teams play. I mean, I know those two teams just do not like each other. Um, Royal Oak, obviously, when you look at them, they're one and three in their last four games. That's not good. Um, obviously, Rashad Wilson, Kenda Clark, um, Davis Arbiter, Dylan Hoffman, and Nick Hoffman. I think they're all doing too much. Um, I think that's the problem that Coach Aaron Smith has with them. Um, just slow it down and simplify things, and I think they're going to be fine. Um, Oxford and Seaholm, that game was really interesting. I, I really think that was a good, I mean, like, Seaholm won that one 54 51. Um, Oxford had some struggles in this game against Seaholm. Seaholm's starting to get whole a little bit. I mean, they sit five and six. They're rolling right now with a ton of confidence. Um, Rochester and Stony Creek, I mean, both, the, they did not play. Um, but they're going to be part of that crosstown showdown this year coming up at Oakland. Um, which I think that's going to be really interesting between those two teams. Um, so when you look at this division, and then Troy Athens, of course, they had some moments that looked good. Then they had some moments they didn't look so good. Um, Kyrie Harper, um, been really solid at point guard. Um, they got some players there at Troy Athens, a lot to like with Coach Dave Scott's team. Um, bottom line is, um, they've got to be more consistent. I mean, that's what I'm seeing with Troy Athens right now. Um, and then let's go to the gold. Um, obviously, if Harper Woods is the best team in that division. Um, like the way the Pioneers have been playing. Um, yes, they had a tough loss to Rouge um, the other night. Um, Rouge is a very good team, though. Um, and then you look at, obviously, with Southfield. Um, had had a really questionable loss the other night. Um, playing against UD Jesuit. Now, UD Jesuit was a very good team. I mean, give them their de their due there. But, you know, I'm curious to see how Coach Terrence Porter's team is going to respond after that loss. Um, Avenel picked up a nice win against Ferndale U. Um, Ferndale U has been really inconsistent. Um, and that's a bit of a concern for me when I look at them. Um, and then Pontiac, you know, they they had that win against Southfield Bradford Academy. Um, but like I said with Pontiac, they're not a consistent team. So... For me, when I look at this division right now, I clearly think that Harper Woods is the best team in the gold. Um, Avondale right now, I'd probably would say, would be the second best team, followed by Ferndale U. Um, followed by Ferndale U. Um, Pontiac, I think, is the last place team in that division. Then it's Southfield. Then it's um, Pontiac. So, really not a lot of change in this division. Um, the blue, I think it's clearly it's Berkeley right now, the team to beat in this division. Um, Oxford could be a player, um, maybe Stony Creek when healthy, Rochester maybe when Kamani Potts comes back, um, I, Rochester hung tough with Clarkston, um, so I'm curious to see how that happens there, um, White we've already talked about, um, I expect that division's gonna probably be a 4-5 team, 4-5 team division until the end of the year, um, and then the red, I still think it's North Farmington's division to lose in that, um, in the, um, red. So that's my take on boys basketball. Let's break down the girls now. Um, obviously the big story here is last week's, um, win by North Farmington at Oxford. Um, and this was really impressive. 40 to 21. Now what didn't help Oxford's case was Nevaeh Wood, um, getting hurt first two minutes and 12 seconds of the game, um, forced Oxford to change a lot what they were doing. Um, so Leffler had 21 of the, um, 40 points, which says a lot right there. Um, obviously, it's a big win for North Farmington because it puts them in a really good spot. Um, and I like what Coach Jeff Simpson said. Um, this win doesn't win you a division. This win, you know what I mean? It gets you a leg up in the division. And that's the case with North Farmington in the white because they right now are a leg up and they have Oxford having to come to North Farmington. And... When I look at this game here, and obviously it was a defensive slugfest early on. I mean, and I read the comments from Coach Sella Leffler, and I read, and I and I heard her interview. Um, North Farmington, are they a good defensive team? Yeah, they can be. They have moments where they can be. But when you're a team that relies on Sarah Leffler and Penelope Crary, you need to find who your third and fourth scores are. 
And that's the case for Coach Jeff Simpson. Is who is it going to be? Is it Ania Jihad? Is it Eliza Muller? I mean, they've had some moments, but they got to be more consistent. I mean, yes, Leffler and Curry are going to have the bulk of the shots, the bulk of the attention, but you need those third and fourth scores, you know, to win your game. And that's what happened here. I mean, they shut down, they shut down Oxford. I mean, shut down Miranda Wanapko. They shut down Peyton Richter. Um, shut down Sophia Robb, shut down Allison Huffsetter. You know, you shut that lineup down. That says a lot. Really does. Um, so when you look at North Farmington right now, I mean, sitting real nice at 12-0. and 0, And you look at that district ahead of them. I think they got a great, I think they got a great chance to knock off Farmington's Mercy. Yes, Mercy is a good team. Are they beatable? Yes, they are. In that district at North Farmington. So, if you're Coach Jeff Simpson right now, you're sitting real pretty right now. You are sitting really, really pretty right now. I mean, clearly, the Raiders look, they look good. I mean, they look solid. They look legit. So, Leffler's been playing really good basketball. I'm surprised nobody's looked at her yet. No colleges have looked at her yet. I'm surprised. Um, Penelope Crary, I'm surprised another team hasn't looked at her yet. I mean, they're both that good. They're both really that good. Um, everybody else in the division, you look at, obviously, Royal Oak's been struggling. I'm one in three of your last four games. That's not good. That is not good for Coach Brian Zapata. A team that's really been rolling is Berkeley. I'll tell you what. They're back. Here's why. I mean, they are getting good play from... They're, they're, different players have been stepping up. Jillian Gones back. It's a big deal. Um, Sammy Withrow's been playing good. Um, you look at that team. They have turned things around. I mean, they look like... They look lost early in the year. I mean, like, you know... And then they decide, okay, let's play... To, let's play what we're more comfortable. Berkeley basketball. And look at what Coach Cody Faulkner's done. They've turned things around. They're rolling at the right time. They're getting better. And who knows? I mean, could they be a team that, you know, could could they do it again? Could they surprise some people? It's possible. It certainly is. I mean, yes, Detroit Renaissance is there in that district. I mean, like, and they look better than than ever. But let's not forget this team did lose to Berkeley last year. Yes, they got a new coach in Deshaun Wood. But I'll tell you what, if Berkeley plays what they're capable of, they could give Detroit Renaissance and fits. I'll tell you that much. Um, but like but it's a different Berkeley team though. So but Berkeley right now is rolling right now at the right time. They're playing some good basketball. Really encouraged to see what they're been, what they've been doing. Harper Woods is a hard team to trust because there's been games where they look really good. And there's games like against Berkeley and Oxford, they just really don't look good. They've put up 30 points, over under 35 points. That tells me something right there. When teams focus on players like Cecilia Peterson, you know, then Harper Woods got a big problem. Or teams that play actual defense against them, then they got some actual problems. Um, Seaholm's been on and off. Um, Addie Flynn, we mentioned, still been very consistent. Shea Manchester had a nice game. The other night, um, but like I said with Seaholm, I think they're going to be a team. They could surprise some people come postseason time. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then you have a a Troy Athens, of course. You know they've been a mystery team. They're six and six right now. Um, you know everything goes starts and ends with Skylar Emerson. That's clear over there with Troy Athens. Um, Abby Malone's been playing some good basketball for Coach J.C. Klump as well. Um. But it starts and ends with, um, with um, you know, Skylar Emerson. That's clearly what it is with Troy Athens. Um, and then there's Rochester Adams. Um, this is a young team, obviously. They've had some ups and downs, the lumps. They've taken a lot of ups and downs, as mentioned. I mean, like, it's going to, I mean, like, you know, so we'll see what happens with them. Um, I think with them, at, with Adams, I think, you know, they're just young right now. It's really what it is. I mean, they're getting better. I mean... But 
we'll see what happens to them. I mean, I'm curious to see what happens with Joe Marbrick's team. Um, but they are young right now. Just going through a lot right now. Let's go from the white to the blue. Um, when you look at this division, obviously, Bloopia Hills is still the favorite in this division, the way they've been playing. Um, I've been really pleased with Oak Park. Um, I think the Knights are a scary team. I mean, I think Oak Park could give Farmington everything they could handle because the way they've been playing. Chantel Corson's team has turned the corner. They've had, they had a good win against Detroit Southeastern. They had, they knocked off a good at, I mean, like, then they knocked off a good Ferndale team. Um, Oak Park is really starting to turn things around, which is good. Um, they're getting some scoring. They're get they're defending at the right time. I mean, you know, early on it was rough for them, but I, I really think with Oak Park, with the way that things are, they're turning things around. Um, I think the Knights, they're a team, you know, they could surprise some people. You know, and then postseason wise, it could be a challenge for them, obviously. Um, I, I just think with them it's gonna be it'll be it'll be a challenge when you look at both the division and also in the postseason. Um, but there are a lot of challenges ahead for them. So we'll see what happens with them. Um, but the team really, you know, the watch for is Bloomfield Hills. And people say, Well, okay, you look at the Blackhawks right now at the way that they're playing. Um, yes, their record says, you know, ten and one. And all that, you know, they've, I mean, they've gotten comfortable. They've starting to win games. I mean, but the question with me is, are they tested enough? That is the big time question coming in. And I know they had to cancel their game with Summit Academy. Um, but they ended up picking up Stony Creek, who ended up having um, their opponent, Utica, drop. So now they're playing each other on Monday night. And that's going to be a really interesting game because... One, it benefits two sides of things here. It benefits Stony Creek because you got an extra game to play. You got a game to play. You know what I mean? You know, you don't have to change anything. Different opponent, but you don't have to really change anything. And then on Blue Bay Hills' side, this is where I'm really happy with them, the fact they're playing a tougher opponent. Because now if you coach Chris and Massey, you say, okay, we're playing a legit team here. You know, we're not playing these cupcake teams, you know what I mean, that... We're blowing people out like 79 to 3 or 80 to 3 or like like that. You're playing somebody. You're playing somebody who is very legit. You in Stony Creek. You're playing somebody, you know, who is very good. And you don't have to worry about that game February 13th when you have to go to Birmingham Marion to play Birmingham Marion. I mean, like, that would have been the other game, you know, that would would have gave Bloomby Hills trouble. I will tell you what, St Stony Creek gets Bloomby Hills. That game's gonna give Bloomby Hills some trouble. I mean, if you're Kellen James, I mean, if you're Coach Kellen James, you know, you got to prepare. Instead of preparing for Utica, you're preparing for Bloom Bay Hills. You know what they got to deal with. And if you're Coach Kristen Massey, instead of playing for Summit Academy, you're preparing for Stony Creek. It's going to be a heck of a game, I think. That'll be a really good game to watch. It'll be a really interesting game to watch. Um, And then you look at um Pontiac from struggling. Um... You look at Ferndale University, they've been struggling. Ferndale, of course, has been almost average. But Avondale's been the one that I really can't figure out. Because here's a team that the last five games, they've not been competitive. They've lost five straight games, and they've been blown out in four of the five. That tells me something right there with Avondale. Something's a miss with them. It really is. I mean, seriously. Something's amiss with Coach Roy Christman's team. Because you have players like Lily Titus and Madison Manyweathers. They haven't gotten the job done. And it, and the stats and the stats prove it. I mean, you gotta look at obviously, okay. You know, the loss to Ferndale probably is the one that really is gonna sting the most out of this. I mean, the bottom line is, here's a team that you know, coming into the year, you thought, okay, could they finish maybe third in the blue? <laughs> Behind Farmington and and Bloomby Hills. I mean I mean like here's a here's a team that I thought, you know, could turn things around, but they really haven't. Um and that's the unfortunate part. I mean, I've I've watched some of their games 
I mean, like, I don't think they've been the same team since the first game when they lost to Warren Mott with the way that happened with six players on the floor. Um, I just don't think they've been the same team since. Um, then they got on a roll a little bit early, got a little, on a roll a little bit, and then they ended up losing, um, and they went on this really bad losing streak. If you're Coach Roy Christman, you're going through a lot right now. You got a tough time right now. And that team, you know, that they've got, they're, they're, they're in some trouble right now. I think Avondale's in some serious trouble right now. I really do. Um, and then there's Farmington. Um, they still have this problem where, you know, they are very good against the league and then they're terrible against everybody else. And I wouldn't say terrible against everybody else. My bad. I apologize for that. But not very good. I mean, you clearly look at this team. When they play against teams that are in their division, you know, the division looks good. But when they play against anybody else, <laughs> bad things happen. But, you know, when you look at this game, you're pre in the um, blue title game, most likely, between Farmington and Bluefield Hills. Both teams coming in undefeated. Um, to me, I, I just think that this one, this looks like a complete mismatch on paper. I think Bloomby Hills is a better team here. Um, I think they, I think, you know, and then, but they're going to be playing a back-to-back against a really good opponent, Stony Creek. I think that's going to help Bloomby Hills more playing, that, playing, playing Stony Creek on Monday night and then playing Farmington the next night because it's going to get them prepared. It'll get them prepared, and I think it's going to benefit them going into the um, later parts of the season. It really will be. Um, so when I look at this game here, when I look at this division, obviously, obviously, Bloomfield Hills um, really is the one that stands out up at Farmington. Um, then it is um, Oak Park. And then, um, you know, then you have Ferndale, then Ferndale U, then Pontiac. Um, that's the case right now in the blue division right now. Um, and then let's go to the red. Um, when you look at this division, obviously, you look at, you got West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, Rochester, Clarkson, Stony Creek. Um, Tim, and then you have Troy and, um, Southfield Arts and Tech. But when you look at this division right now, West Bloomfield right now is a team to beat. And there are some good reasons why. But they didn't look great against Rochester. I mean, Rochester beat them by 20. 53-33. Um, so Rochester hung in there with them. So that kind of tells me something. Who knows? If West Bloopy has a terrible shooting night, who knows? I mean, yes, the Davis sisters and the Hendrick sisters, th- those are really tough matchups. But if you can go in there and battle them in the glass, limit West Bloopy possessions, I think you have a chance against them. Um... And then you look at West Bloomfield. Yes, they're going to rely on the Davis sisters. They're going to rely on the Hendricks sisters. Destiny Washington's been a, been consistent at point guard. Um, Ava Lord's been a solid player for them. Um, I think I think that's going to be the key going forward. It's can Daryl McAllister develop the bench? That's the key. If he de- if he can develop that bench, it that will be the key for them going forward. Um, then there's Lake Orion. Um, Lake Orion. It's been has been on a roll. Yes, they had that loss to Detroit Renaissance. I mean, like they played really well in that game. Um, Maddie Aberson playing really well. Chloe Weegers has been playing really well. Um, well, Chloe Weegers has been up and down lately. Uh, but Maddie Aberson playing really well for them. Um, they, I think you know Kylie Hex had her moments of greatness. Um, Ryan Palazak's been consistent. Um, I mean, like, and then you look at, for Coach Bob Bridges, obviously using the bench has been a big, big, big key for him. And, you know, getting those players that experience the playing, I think that's a good thing for them. Um, You know, when you look at that bench, you look at, obviously, you know, getting those players to play. Um, Even in blowout games, you know, you look at players like Allison May, who's been playing really well when given the time. Um, You look at players like... um. A Jody McCaffrey's been solid. You look at a player like Audrey Wichmeyer, you know what Audrey Wichmeyer can do. I mean, like, Coach Bob Bridges' depth, he has really been pressing the right buttons when you look at the Dragons. Um, you know, and there's a reason why they're 11 2 right now. I mean, this is a good basketball team. It really is. 
Um, and then there's Rochester. I mean, Rochester's a team that's been, you know, obviously riding Matt, Alice Max, Kelly Robinson. Um, Rochester's height. They need Natalie Race. You know what I mean? Natalie Race has had some had some moments, obviously. Um, I think they need Avery. I think they need um. You know, they need Pleasant, they need, Nor they need Jenna Norgrove um, to step up. And I think that's going to be the key for Rochester going forward is can they get enough guard play, you know, to um, overcome the, um, to overcome it, you know, and when teams focus on them. So I'm curious to see what happens there with them. Um, Stony Creek, when you look at them, obviously the Mia Carson injury, it's a big deal. Um, Sarah LaPerry's been playing really well. Lily Solik's been playing well. Um, they were, they hung tough with Clarkston, um, without Carson. And that says a lot there. Um, so there's a lot to like with them. Um, they got that Boopy Hills game added. That'll be, that'll be good for them. Um, playing a good opponent. Um, you know, so I'm curious to see how this is going to go between, um, Rochester and, um, you know, with Stony Creek, um, going forward there. Um, Clarkston, when you look at them with their week, obviously they had that win against Stony Creek and then lost to the Raymond Detroit Country Day. Um, Ellie Roback was held to six points in that game against Country Day. Um, big one with Lake Orion looming. That'll be really interesting Friday night. Um, you know, of course, um, Clarkson didn't have Roback in the first meeting. Lake Orion didn't have he Kylie Heck in the second meet in, the in that meeting as well. So it'll be very interesting to see that matchup over at Clarkston. Um, Wet Lake Orion's got a tough stretch coming up um, with with four tough games on the road. It'll be really interesting to see what happens with them. Um, and then there's, uh, but Clarkson, obviously, you know, Ellen Monger had 19 in that game against Country Day. Um, Ava Hernandez has been up and down lately. Um, you know, you look at Kira Tomey. She's had, she's had moments of greatness. Um, you know, Mia Zorsky's had some greatness, moments of greatness as well. Um, so I'm curious to see what Coach Aaron Gunner has going forward with Clarkston. Um, and then there's Troy, and then there's um, and there's Groves, of course. Groves, of course. Um, when you look at them, um, Groves, I think's in some trouble. I just think that they're in some serious trouble. Um, you have Sierra Racco, you have um, you have um, Caitlin Sanders. Um, they don't really have that type of third score. I mean, like Cameron Little probably would be pretty close to third score. There, or Lily Gallagher is another option, but they don't really have that third score. I mean, everything flows through Caitlin Sanders. Of course, Sanders' game kind of reminds me of Kevin Garnett. Um, her game is eerily, eerily similar to Garnett when he played for the Timberwolves. And, you know, it's difficult on somebody when you have to rely on them so much to carry the load. And for Coach Allison Heidi, that's what's going on right now. Relying a lot on Sanders, relying a lot on Rocco, you know, to carry them through. And Groves right now is a team, they're going through a rough patch right now. They really are. Um, so we'll see what happens with them going forward there. Um, Safford Erson Tech picked up a 55-50 win against Troy. Defense is still a mess. Still a problem with that team. Hard for me to trust that team defensively. Um... Bottom line is you got Kamari Page, Kristen Banks, um, Jalen Austin, but I can't trust this team defensively at all. I mean, this team is a nightmare defensively. Really is. Um, and then you have, and then there's Troy. I mean, Troy, of course, you know, 50 points. Good start. Um, you know, good start, you know, especially with a very young team. I mean, obviously you got Reagan Zider, Diamond Prince. Um, you know, and then of course, um, I'm curious to see what others step up for Troy going forward. Of course, um, the Colts got a really tough road ahead for them. Um, obviously, when you look at the red, um, clearly, you know, I still think this division's going to come down to West Bloomfield's still the favorite, obviously, with what they got. Um, I know they got Lake Orion coming up on Tuesday, which is going to be interesting considering, you know, there's a lot of storylines in this game, in that game, considering that um, also the relationship between Coach Bob Bridges and Daryl McAllister. Um, the interesting matchup, the matchup I worry about is inside if you're Lake Orion, especially with both with both Hendricks sisters, especially Sydney Hendricks inside. Um, 
obviously, you know, Lake Orion, of course, is Maddie Ebert, Chloe Wiegers, Taylor Dinda, Audrey Wichmeyer. Um, Dinda's been playing really well for Lake Orion lately. And that says a lot right there for Coach Bob Bridges. Um, knowing that, you know, when you look at that matchup, it'd be really interesting to see what happens between Lake Orion and West Bloomfield. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, you have Stony Creek and Rochester. They don't play each other this week because of the Crosstown Showdown um, coming up at Oakland University. That's in a couple weeks. Um, and then you have, um, and then you have, um, I mean, then you have Clarkson taking on Troy. And then you have um, Southfield Arts and Tech taking on Groves. Um, that'll be really interesting to see how these matchups stand out um, around the red this week. So a lot to look at heading into the week. Um, my final thoughts of the week, we're going to keep an eye on everything going around the league, obviously. Um, so make sure you stay tuned to um, the blog at second by 4650 at blogspot.com. We're, we still haven't found a coach yet at Pontiac. Um, we're going to keep an eye on that for football, obviously. So we'll see what happens going forward with them. Um, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Sangamay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, make sure. Um, so we'll see what happens. I wish everybody the best of luck this week around OA Nation. Um, stay safe. God bless everybody. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. And I'll see you next week. God bless.